Hi there, this is Art and Such with my rain balloon tutorial for Esmeralda from Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, for this pattern, you're going to need some white bands, purple, pink for the headband, a couple of gold or yellow, um, some blue bands. Now for the eyes, you can use beads or bands. I'm going to use bands this time. Um, black for the hair, and what are we missing here? Um, I think those are all the colors. I'm going to use a kind of caramel color this time, but originally I did use the tan skin tone, so that's up to you what you'd like to do there. And I'm also going to give you an option of how to snug in the waist a little bit more, um, but I did like the, the five rows together so you could see the stripes alternating there. All right, without further ado, let's get started. You are gonna need a hook and holding hook, your loom in the offset configuration, and a couple of C-clips, and we should be good to go. So the arms will be first. You're gonna take the skin tone you're using, take a single band, wrap it on your hook, one, two, three times. If you want the arms to be, or the hands to be thicker, you could use two or even three bands and wrap them together. I'm using the single instead. Um, and that will look like this. And then we're going to take a single band, stretch it, twist it, bring it back onto itself. It should be nice and tight and it's going to sit at the end of your hook. We'll slide the hand band onto it and replace. And we need five more doubled over single bands. So we're going to do this five more times to make a total of six. figured out what I was forgetting, what I did want to say and forgot. Um, on my Esmeralda skirt, I did add some little sequin beads. If you have bells, beads, sequins, charms, you can sew those on afterwards or uh, attach them to it, stitch them to a band and do the same thing. Um, but that's just an embellishment I chose to add, totally optional. Okay, we're going to take three bands now in your skin tone. Oh, no, three bands now of white. If you want the arms to be even thicker than this, you can do four, but I think three is a nice thickness. And if you're trying to save your bands, you can stick with two. It'll just be a little bit thinner. Put them on the end and slide through. Oh, wanted to go through all of those there. And we'll do that three more times. So we're gonna have four sets of three bands all together. And the third time through. And one more time. And now onto two bands. And we can make the other arm now at this point, or if you want to wait and do this a little bit later, or even at the end. Um, you can take a single gold, put it over the arm, and wrap it once and twice. That's the bracelet. So you could do that now, or you could do it when everything's done. Um, I would recommend just doing it on one of the arms, because that's how it goes in the show. All right, next arm, same thing. Single wrapped three times, oh, four times, I guess. This one's a little looser. And onto six doubled over singles. that are a little stretched out already here. Two, three, four, And six, 
And then those four sets of three whites. So you can leave here your arms where they are, or if you're more comfortable with it, you can put them on a, a second hook or even on a, you know, whatever you've got handy, uh, another stick, or you could put them on C-clips, but I'm going to leave mine here just for ease of access and start on the legs. Now this is what my legs looked like. Um, you can play around with this a little bit, so what's more, if you want to have a thicker bottom, you could use more bands at the bottom or two bands at a time instead of doubled over singles. That will make them a little bit thicker, and I wanted mine to be sort of thin, but they do tend to, um, tend to curl a little bit more when they are doubled over. Um, so we've got a single band wrapped one, two, three times, and this is going to go on to eight doubled over singles. And that's how we make the legs. So there's one, two. Another thing you could do is after that second one, you could put double bands on and that will give it a bit of a curve, but it does make them look kind of lumpy. So I'm just going to stick with my doubled over single eight. And this is my third one. Um, okay, four. down. Um, you can also, for one of your legs, do a little anklet, gold band or yellow band, wrap it over one, two, three times. And fit that into place. And we need, as I say, a second one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So wrap a single and start, um, start popping them on here. You know, I, when I, I got the request to do this, I, I like to check and see if there's a tutorial up already because then I can pass that along and um, maybe find a new tutorial to follow myself. But I was actually quite surprised. I couldn't find any tutorials for Esmeralda. But I did see a couple of pictures. Um, one of them was very interesting. It was done in the style of Isalicious Designs Disney princesses. And it was... It's quite beautiful. I couldn't figure out how she did the hair though. So I am um, not so happy with the hairstyle I came up with. You might have, have luck doing some loose single band chains when we get to that point, but either way, it's a, it's a shame I couldn't find a tutorial for the one that is pictured on the internet. You'll, um, you'll find it if you look it up anytime soon. Okay, so we've got our two legs here and we should be ready to go to the loom. Okay, I'm going to do the body as one part and then loop that up and we'll do the head separately and add the body on by the neck and that um, that lets us fit it all in the loom. So we are going to take two single skin tone browns, top center to the second band down in the center and we're going to come down one more time Oh, sorry, two more times it looks like. Um, yeah, two more times with double skin tone bands. So that should take you to the fourth peg down. Um, then we need skin tone bands from the second center to the second side. 
So I can center to the second other side, like so. You have to be patient with me here. I'm looking at three different pictures and on each one I change one thing. So I want to make sure I'm giving you the right parts as we go. All right, so our next one coming down should be white, two white bands. And then we're gonna do one turquoise or blue band for the middle stripe part. And then we're gonna use purples, double bands all the way to the bottom of the loom. of the sides which are going to be um, which are going to mirror each other right we're going to come down once with double skin tone bands from the second side down to, uh, second peg down to the third peg down and we're going to do um, white bands next but you have a choice if you want her to have a thicker upper torso bosom area you can do six to eight bands on that next peg. If you just want to keep it simple, you can put the two. I'm going to do six here. Three, four, five, and six. I, I actually find, I personally find this doesn't make it really harder to to um, loom, but if you're concerned, um, you don't have to do that there. The next set is going to be two, uh, two white bands from the fourth peg down to the fifth peg down. The same on the opposite side. And then we want two gold for the next set. And purple the rest of the way down. And double bands or two bands together right to the bottom of the loom. We'll do this on both sides again as I say. And you can take two purple bands, put them on the end of your hook and slide the legs over. If at any point um, you're concerned that your bracelet, your bangle is on the wrong leg, don't worry too much about it. You can um, always take that band off and move it to the other if you feel like this gets flipped around. We're going to put the bands with the legs onto the bottom pegs. and. Get be actually no, that's fine. Get between and bring the band over that middle center or that middle bottom one. Okay, we can put our arms on now onto the second pegs down on either side, and you can see if I put mine down now, it's going to flop up. So I'm going to turn it over. You can do this with your hook or your fingers. Um, I'm going to flip it around and transfer it on so that it curves more downwards. You can play around with that position as you, as you need to. And we'll put the other one on as well. Make sure all the bands go. Okay, we'll put our holding bands on. Um, and that'll be next. 
So the first one is going to be um, a white, or sorry, a skin tone, I think we'll want to use a skin tone. Stretch it across the third pegs from the top. So it's going to make a little triangle. The next one, if you possibly can, double over a white and bring it across. If you feel it's too tight, you can leave it as a single, but this will tighten that area up a little bit. And we're going to do that for the next two as well. Now when you get to the six pegs, if you can and you want to, you can try to um, stretch your, your band over three times, like triple it instead of doubling it. This is very hard to do and sometimes the bands will break, but that will cinch the waist in a little bit extra. Um, another option would be to twist it so that it comes Oh, I think I almost broke it there. Um, to twist it so it comes back halfway. Like so. And you can do that with your hook if that's easier. And for the rest, we're going to do single purples and just stretch them across. Triangle form all the way to the bottom. And at this point, we'll have one more thing to do before we can loop up the body. And that is, those are the side extensions. So the skirt one is going to be purple. We'll do this on the hook. Uh, and I'll show you just how far out mine comes. So if you feel you want a little less of a tail, you can do eight. If you want the whole long thing, you'll do nine. I'm going to do eight this time just to see. So we'll take a single wrap it twice and it's going to go on to eight sets of double bands. For the longer version as what you saw in my original, once more, do nine. Take the bands that are on your hook and transfer them to the what peg is this here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. To the eighth peg from the top. So it's uh, it's not going to go on the one under the white. It's going to go um, one more down from there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stretch it down. And as you stretch, you'll take one piece out of each link to put onto the pegs in between. So I'm going to turn this around so you can see while I can reach. As I pull it down, I line up the next part of the chain and I bring it over that following peg. Stretch it down a little bit more. Grab a piece, bring it over. And again. You might find there's a better angle to do this with for yourself, but uh, as I said, I want to show you what we're doing here. And you should have two little links left over, two or three. If you did the nine, then you'll have an extra one there. Let's make one for the other side. I'll go a little faster this time. Single wrapped twice, and you're going to go on to eight, or if you wish, nine sets of double bands. One there. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Tie 
attach it same place, same way, opposite side. Now for the, the next part where we brought widen this up, I'm going to give you two options. So first I'm going to show you the way that I did it originally uh, and then I'll make it without this piece here. Okay. So to have this effect, you're going to take a single, did we do purple or blue? A single purple, wrap it on the hook once and twice. Put two blue bands on to match that middle stripe. Replace. Put on two white together. And another two whites. And then the purple will go onto the sixth peg down right where that, where the purple starts. And you're going to bring it up to the second peg from the top. So skip two and it goes on to the next one. And then take one piece out of each chain and put it on the place in between. So that will get you this blue and you would do on both sides. Now I'm going to just for experiment's sake, I'm going to do it without that piece. Uh, it should look more like this. Uh, if that's something you want to try, you can. And if you want to jump ahead and see how it comes out and how it compares, that would also be, your, be up to you. So to do it that way, what we would do is start at the next peg up. So I'm not going to need the blue. I'm going to use a white single. Wrap it once and twice. Put on two white bands and two white bands. So now I have a chain with two sets, two links on it. And this would go then from the fifth peg down to the peg, um, to the second peg from the top. So I would only be skipping one. And this will make it only only thick around the the chest area and it'll keep the waist narrow. At least that's my, my theory. I think that should work okay. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And then we'll be ready to loop this up and start on the face. So we're coming along here. So let's do it going okay. Make sure we can cinch this on here. There. All right, to loop up, I'm going to start on the bottom side and we're going to be collecting the bottom two bands that you see on each of those pegs. So take your hook, put it inside that bottom side peg, push back the top bands, collect the bottom two, bring them forward and onto the peg above. Push back that triangle band and the side chain, get the bottom two, bring it forward. And I'm going to go a little bit faster. We're going to follow this right up to the top. And if you're having trouble seeing the bands that you need to loop, you can always grab them with your finger or the hook and pull them a little bit to the side or a little bit down so that they're easier to reach. Once you get past the purple, keep looping up. You're going to get the two gold and bring it forward, the next two white. And on the next peg here, we have those potentially six or eight bands. If you're more comfortable, you can grab them a couple at a time. If you're feeling okay, you can take all of them, catch it with your finger, bring it on to the next peg. And the next two brown. And lastly, reach through the arm, 
take the bottom two brown and bring them up to the top, or sorry, to the center second peg. So there shouldn't be any bands sitting along the bottom here now. And you should have these nice little teardrop shapes and we will loop up the other side. Feel free to turn your, your loom around if you're needing a different angle on this last part. And my other, my other hint I'll give you, my other tip, is if you feel like it's getting a little bit tight on your loom, you can make sure uh, once your areas are secure, um, you can take some of the some of the bottom pieces off and loosen it up. And just remember that we haven't looped up the middle just yet. And when you're near that top, remember to get all eight of the white on that third peg down. If you need to pause, go ahead and pause. And take your time so that you get all of them. Two browns. And from under the arm to the second center. Okay, uh, last row remaining is the middle and you're gonna grab that bottom and just keep looping straight up. So bottom two forward, bottom two forward. The triangle bounds and uh, extensions should not be in your way during this part. And again here, if you feel like it's getting a little tight, you can start popping off some of the bands that are on the bottom that have been secured into place. And add the second peg from the top, go through all of the bands, get your bottom two, bring them forward. And we can take this off of the loom, just don't lose the, the top, the bands on the top peg. You can keep them where they are, use your finger, a hook, a C-clip, um, and we're going to remove the rest and then grab hold of those. I'm just holding it in place for now until I've got some of this out of the way here. all this rainbow looming I still find it's hard to be patient with uh, with this part of the process when you're taking them off it always seems like like I'm ready to just pop it in and move on to the next part but I'm sure I've broken enough bands and looms that way to have theoretically learned my lesson it's just so slow getting it off when, when you're so close to getting that part ready okay I'm putting my hook through taking that off well, that's kind of nice um, so there, just to compare, the very narrow waist with the three stripes or the wider waist with the five stripes, at your discretion, you can, I can do it either way. And we're going to go to the loom to work on the hair head face now. Um, I'll say it once again, there are, I think there are nicer hair designs out there. I couldn't find one that would fit with this though, but please, if you have an idea, pass it along. Uh, give it a try, put, uh, send a picture, put it on my Instagram, and I'd love to see what to do with the with the hair. Um, I was thinking you could do single chains coming out or have other chains coming out the side here, but uh, I'll show you the way that I did it, and yeah, feel free to play around if you've got a method you think will be, will be effective here. Um, Anyway, for this hairstyle, we need two black bands coming top center to top side, other side, come down twice on each of the rows with double black. And then we're going to switch to skin tone, come down three times in the middle with double skin tone starting at the second, 
put the third peg down. And I will hold this up for you to see in just a second here. Two sets of double skin tone on the sides. You know what? I think I kind of like this skin tone color better for, for Esmeralda. The tan isn't really quite tan enough, I don't think. Um, we're going to come in from the sides to the center. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. I'll give you a second to pause if you need and check that you've got those pieces. And then we can put the body on. And I'm going to turn this around so that my front is facing the back. Because I think when we're, I believe when we're done, um, that the face will look better on the other side. I think that's how this or went this last time. Um, okay. For the holding bands, we'll use a single black across the second ones down, doubled over single skin tone on the third ones down. Uh, skip the next one for a second here and do another doubled over skin tone across the fifth pegs. And for this one, we'll need the eyes if you're using uh, if you're using beads, you can get them onto your, your hook um, or use dental floss to get them onto a doubled over single. I'm going to use bands this time, so a single wrap three times, a single wrap three times, and onto a doubled over single skin tone. If you're using beads, you can transfer them from the hook or thread them on with floss. You can find how to do that in a number of my videos or um, if you'd like me to make a special video soon I can do that for you as well or if there's another method you have by by all means go for that but the, the bands will work just fine or a pony bee if you want to draw on pupils and we're transferring that to the fourth pegs from the top and separating bringing the hook or sorry the band over that fourth peg down in the middle all right, last part before we loop up is the hair extensions. Oh, and you know what? We did the earrings as well. I'll show you how I attach the earrings. Um, but let me make a little note to you. It looks a little bit like this. And it's kind of messy, which is why I had it, had it coming out through the hair. But this is something you could do with, um, with a little bit of gold wire or... Um, maybe certain beads if you do want to use the or you could even add it on after if you are doing it with the band you'll need a gold for each side um, a skin tone or hair colored band I'm gonna use hmm, I'm gonna use skin tone and what we did if I can remember this uh, double over your skin tone put your hook through and bring that gold band through. Or was it the other way around? Hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on. Go through the skin tone. Sorry, go through the gold. Put the skin tone doubled over on the end. Bring your gold band over. Replace the skin tone. Pull one side over the other side and over the end of the hook and that's gonna make it into a slip knot. Now, as I said, there are probably other methods you can use if there's something you're more comfortable with or, um, yeah, or that you find easier. You can certainly do that, but this is what we get uh, this way. And this went onto the fourth peg down where the eyes are. Now, if you just leave it like this, you will have that little nub sticking out. So uh, again, you can pull it through the hair after if that's your preference, and I'll do the other one. So put your gold on, and single doubled over skin tone, pull it over, replace one end over the other, one side over the other, like so, 
and arms with the other side. Okay. All right, so there we have our ears. And then the hair, as I said, I'm just gonna do a chain and it's gonna come over and around. If you wanna try single chains, like one band at a time instead of two, that will make it kind of looser. I wonder, I wonder how that would be if we tried that. Hmm. So if you were doing it with one at a time, uh, just pulling one on after another, it'll be more like this, which would be a little bit looser. I kind of like that, what do you think? Um, I do kind of like that. But uh, just to be fair, I'm going to show you the method that I use so you can recreate what you see in the picture. And then if that's something you want to play around with, you certainly can. So I'm taking a single, wrapping it two or three times. And this is going to go on to, I didn't write it down, but I'm pretty sure I remember 11 sets of double or two black bands. You know, I guess another way to make this kind of puffier is you could do three at a time and that would make it a little bit thicker. But yeah, please um, let me know what you think on the on the question of the hair. It's four, five, six. Seven. Oh, do you know um another thing that could work? Check that and then I'll tell you. I'll tell you. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Another thing you could try is you could make a bunch of chains with double bands like we're doing here or singles and then attach them all to the top center and cinch them, cinch a bunch of them in or um, kind of connect them to each other again at the end. We're going to keep this really simple though. Um, and this still looks nice, but um, yeah, if you just did this with all of your sets and then you could stitch them together at the end or attach them here and there, that might work too. But I'm going to stick with my original hair, even though I'm not entirely satisfied, but it's still okay. And I'm putting it on the top center and then just like with the skirt extensions, we'll take one piece out of each chain and bring it along onto the intervening pegs here. Okay, and the other side, same deal. Single wrapped a couple of times, two or three times up to you. And 11 sets of double bands. You know, usually when I uh, make a figure and then do my video, I I usually undo the, I, I keep the one that I like the best and then I undo the other and reuse the bands. But I think I, I think this time around I like both of my, both of my little Esmeraldas, but for different reasons. Maybe I will keep them both. Let me know in the comments if you, if you liked one better than the other or again what effects you you thought were effective here like I'm just thinking I like the cinched waist the tighter waist but I don't like losing the color detail on that waistband part and I do like the skin tone like the darker skin tone I don't like the I, li I do prefer the beaded eyes over the banded eyes though so definitely some features I'm finding are are better than others once I start experimenting, but sometimes you have to give up one thing to to get another, you know? Like as I say with the waist. All right, if this is what you see before you, then you are ready to loop. 
If you are feeling overwhelmed about the neck, getting in the neck piece here, you can pull these bands down, uh, the body down, or even put it onto the peg underneath. Um, once you have that out of the way, you're going to reach in for the two bands that are coming from the side closest to you. Um, at least in my case, those are the last ones that were laid down and they're sitting above the others. Hold on, my bands are popping off here. Press those on more securely and bring your bands over to the side. Nothing else should be stretching or pulling. If it looks like this, you're good to go back and get the next two, bring them to the opposite side and reach in one more time for the center, bring those forward. I'm going to loop up either side. We're going to get the bottom two skin tone and bring them forward. Reach in, push back everything that could be in your way and get the bottom two. It's a little bit tighter on that peg. That's all right. Get the bottom two black, the bottom two black, and bottom two black, and this time bring them to the top center. And just as with the body, if you feel like you want to loosen a couple of bands up, you can. We haven't done the middle though, so don't take that off just yet. And we'll come up the opposite side. Bottom two brown. I only got one there, so let's try that again. And I can't see the other, so bring that out to the side a bit. Get a better view, a better angle. Oh, a better grab. This isn't going well. Try that one more time. So I'm pulling it right up to the side so I can see it, reach it, grab it, get through all the rest and this is going so swimmingly now they're popping off everywhere. I've almost got it. See when I put that one on the other one came off. All right now um, we're gonna go in and get the next two. Bring those forward. I think the earring got in my way a little bit. Okay, and now we've got the right ones. Two black, the next two black, and loop in towards the top center. Don't let those bands come off. And we can go to the fifth down in the middle, grab the bottom two, bring them around and forward and onto the next peg, and continue to loop up straight to the top. Okay, you can take one black band or two if you want it to be extra, extra secure. Get it ready on a couple of your fingers on your less dominant hand. And you're going to push the hook through the top center peg through all of the bands and I like to keep the open part pointed away because if you go in with it towards you it's going to catch on the, the bands. So straight down, twist it a little to the side and towards you. Grab that band that's on your hand and carefully pull it back up and through. Put the other side on and the side furthest from the end of the hook is going to go over the other piece and over the end of the hook. That will make a slip knot. And you can put this on a C-clip or on your finger um, or leave it on a hook and release the hair head face from the lip. Now, depending on the kind of beads or eyes you used, uh, you might find that they've shifted around a little bit and in a second you can pop them to where you want them. The earrings will adjust a little and I'll show you uh, oh, how to do the headband and a couple of other things you might wish to do as finishing touches. All right, so decide on the side that you want for the front. And this is the one I want for my front. You can see my earrings sticking right through my face. So that's not good. Um, actually, you know what? I like this side better now that I'm looking. Okay, so turn to the back. Put your hook through a couple of bands and grab that, uh, that slip knot band 
bring it under and you can put that onto a C-clip. I bring it under so that it doesn't just stick up at the top here because yeah, we want to cinch it in. Maybe put it under another band so it's not flopping about. Now on the front side, push your eyes through, even them out if you need to. Check where your earrings are. Uh, so yeah, my earring looks really funny right now. I'm going to bring it through the hair. I'm turning this upside down. I hope you can still see that okay. I'm going to go under a piece or two of hair, grab it and slide it under. And uh, I might find I might find that's not where I want it. I might want to bring it right be all the way behind the hair too. Um, yeah, so you can see now like it's that's not that blobs on the other side. So I think I'll do something similar to in the original, which is go through the back and grab it so that it sits just outside of the hair. And at that point, I could even maybe bring it back through a couple of the hair bands. But you can, can play around with where you'd like it to sit. The, um, the ideal though is that they'll sit somewhat evenly. So let me try moving that up through a different space so that it's more in line with the other ear. There, that's pretty good. I think those are pretty even now. Um, okay, we'll do the headband and then I'll show you a couple of additional optional things and I'm also going to move my my gold bangles to the opposite sides here because I turn or the opposite side just because I did turn her around okay so I'm going to take three pink bands stretch them out on my finger now you want to have an extra band or possibly a holding band on hand if you've got a color you never use and you want to um, or that you have an excess of, that's fine to use here. I'm gonna use, okay, I'll use a purple just because uh, if you want it to blend in with the hair, certainly use black. And we're gonna put the hook through the head, grab one end of the pinks and pull it through. You can put it onto a C-clip. I prefer to put it onto band, which is why I got that purple one handy. And I will put that on an I'm trying to think, uh, usually I just hold it here, but I'm trying to think the best way to show you. I'm going to put it on a C-clip for the moment, just so that doesn't slip out while I'm bringing the other side through. Okay, so the pink has been pulled to the back and I've put it onto another band. And then I'm going to go to the opposite side. This is the face. I'm going to the opposite side. I'm going to pull those bands through again. Uh, if you're having a hard time with this, you could uh, also pull them through one at a time, I suppose. Make sure that it's somewhat level on the front. And then on the back, we're... Oh, let me just change the angle on this here. On the back, you are going to get that purple band again, or a second one if you... Maybe a second one if you feel the need. Um, we'll do a second one. Or you could just put this on a C-clip, that's the easiest, but I'm going to go through again. Let's put one side over the other, and now this can go on the same C-clip, or it can go on to the first C-clip where the black was, um, or they could each, each side could have its own C-clip, it's really up to you. And just push that, to adjust that to where you want it to sit now. If you want the hair to, well, actually the hair's okay loose. If you want the arms to sit against the waist or the legs to stay together, what you can do is put your hook in. So these are the legs we're looking at. I can put my hook in under one band and one band, bring one under the other and put a C-clip on and that will keep them in place. Put a C-clip on just so you can see what that looks like once I let it go. Um, okay, so that would 
help you position the, the legs to stay close. And the same with the arms. If you want your arm to sit at the body, you go to the back. You go under a band or two. Take a piece out of the hand. Bring it under and put that onto a C-clip. And, and then she'll keep her hands on her waist and you can stitch it across and bring the other arm in or do that separately with another C-clip. Totally optional. Oh, do you know what we haven't done? Um, the gold band across, also optional. And if you've got string you wanna use instead, that's fine too. Bring your band over the skirt. Find where you want it to sit. And I actually, I think on mine I had it sitting a little bit low, like so. Then turn to the back, and once at the top and once at the bottom, what you're gonna do is go under a purple band, over the gold, under a purple band. Bring one purple under the other, put on a C-clip. Yes, I'm sorry, there are a lot of C-clips on this project for the finishing work. Um, if, you, if you've got something else you want to try, go for it. And then you would do the same at the back and that would keep it from shifting about too, too much. So once more up top, you could do that on the back side. I don't know why my bands are a little uneven here. Huh. Uh, in terms of the little bangles here that I added, as I said, these are sequins. I totally cheated and just put some needle and thread through and uh, tied them on and then attached them on the back. If there are beads or other bands you want to do, you can play around with those as well. But I think, um, yeah, I think we're, we're good here. I've given you some, some options and ideas and like I said, I'd love to see where you go with this because there's lots you could do. But there you have your Esmeralda. And I thank you for watching. Okay, take care, guys.